You've learned enough about me, now let me sign something out about you. How, how many in your room have a son or a daughter or a niece or a nephew or a grandchild who is a preteen, a teen, or in their early 20s? By a show of hands. Good. For everybody who just raised your hands, how many of you hope the person you just raised your hands about sometime in the next decade becomes independent? <laughs> how many do not want them to become independent? And I'll show you a pretty sick person. <laughs> well, look at this chart. It's called the five levels of the application model. Level one is I have knowledge. Level two is I can apply knowledge in my discipline. That's word problems. Three is I can apply knowledge across disciplines. What does that mean? What I learn in math, I use in science. What I learn in science, I use in social studies. Level four is I can apply knowledge to a real world predictable problem or situation. Level five is I can apply knowledge to a real world unpredictable problem or situation. Got the five levels? I'm going to ask you to really, really have the courage and participate in something. I'm going to ask you to yell out in a moment your own personal belief. But I don't want you to yell it out until I say the word now. I want you to look at the five levels, and I want you to tell me what two numbers on this chart do you think kids will have to be able to function at in order to become independent? Remember, you all wanted them to be independent. Do they have to function at level one and two, or four and five? Got the question? Yell out your answer now. Well, that's pretty scary. Sounds like everybody said four and five. Huh. I guess it means it borders on common sense. Let me push my luck. We have done under a contract an analysis of your state testing program in every state testing program in the country. Virtually every question on every state test measures two numbers on this chart. What two numbers do you think it is? One and two or four and five, folks? We just defined the problem. We have become fixated like, a na like crazy as a nation on one and two in an attempt to prepare kids for four and five. Now, there's nothing wrong with your state test. There's nothing wrong with one and two. I can't get to four and five if I don't have one and two. Here's the problem. We've let one and two become the end line of American education rather than the beginning line of American education. The real world's got to get you to four and five. And the group that's pushed school reform so hard in this country for three decades has been business. And often we talk about the problem, but we haven't defined it. The problem is we are, aren't, we are not teaching young people how to apply the knowledge we're teaching them. And if you don't uh, use it, you lose it. To drive that home, we're going to pull 20 of you out of this room. And we're going to send you next door in just a moment. And we're going to ask the 20 of you that we're going to select to take a test that some kids in one of the local high schools just had to take in college prep, 11th grade, math, science, or social studies. We got some teachers that graded, uh, will grade the papers. I'm pleased to announce we have the press with us tonight, and they agreed tomorrow morning to release your test scores by name. <laughs> but this is a democracy, so I think we should vote on who they are. All in favor of them having be the Chamber Board of Directors, say aye. aye. Hey, they got a lot of faith in you guys, Danny. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I don't have any tests, but let's be brutally honest. How would you do, good or bad? But you all did well once. You know, I know you did. You're here. Now, why could you do it back then, but you can't today? You already said it. If you don't use it. See, in the real world, to be successful beyond school, it's not simply what you took, one and two. It's what can you do with what you took.